What's going on everybody? King of Dakinesu here and today we're going to be talking about Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, how can I really sum up Dragon Dogma 2 real quick is, uh, it's alright. It's not really what you call a, uh, great game, but it's also not the, you know, worst game. Uh, there's a lot of pros and cons to the game, and, uh, the first thing I want to start off with is combat, and that's because I'm going to be talking a huge part on combat because I got so frustrated, frustrated, uh, fr so frustrated with the combat system within the game. So, in Dragon's Dogma 2, the combat system, uh, you have multiple different classes. You first start off with, I think, only like three or four classes at the start. And then you start unlocking some as you progress within the game. And you can change as you go throughout the game. Uh, for Dragon's Dogma 2, right now what I'm playing as is the Mystic Spearhead. Which is, uh, in my personal opinion, I found to be the best uh, vocation for you to, got, uh, for, to use. Uh, it melts through enemies pretty quickly and stuff like that. Uh, the combat system for some, uh, for some of the parts, um, depending on the class, some classes are worth it. Some classes don't even need to be in the game whatsoever. And that also has to do with the uh, ragdoll mechanic. So, for instance, you'll see within the game uh, some of my combat system here uh, within the game that I've recorded. Uh, you'll see. So, if an enemy even hits you one time, it, it's pretty much like a stun instantly. Uh... And you can't really do nothing. So, for instance, right now, I'm getting hit right now. And there is nothing I can do because there's not a block. There's not a dodge button. There's nothing along that line. And I get it. With the Mystic Spearhead, you're supposed to be able to freeze enemies or, like, slow them down and stuff like that. But, however, there, you know, there's just no way for me to get out of that. So, once an enemy starts hitting you, uh, they can basically kick the stuffings out of you until you're dead. And I've had that happen. I've had uh, a group of enemies just hit me, uh, like one enemy hit me one time, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 and they start juggling you. Um, the a the enemy AI is able to juggle you in this game. Yes, yeah, that's how bad the ragdoll system in this game is. They are able to juggle the ever living crap out of you, and I hate that um, because I feel like it shouldn't be like that. Uh, it, it definitely needs to be nerfed. Uh, if you want my honest opinion, the ragdoll feature within the game definitely needs to be nerfed uh, because it just, it's so frustrating. It is so annoying. I understand why they did it. Uh, I understand it's supposed to be, you know, for a difficulty factor to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more difficult within the game. But sometimes instead of it just being difficult, it is just very, very annoying and very frustrating. Because um, I could be uh, up against a group of enemies and I'm trying to take him out, but because the one enemy decides to get a get a hit off on me, uh, now all of them are kicking the stuffings out of me. And I mean, they literally kick you while you're down, and they will beat you to you dead to your dead. It's so annoying. Um, uh, the AI system in the game, because considering that also has to do with the combat system as well, uh, the AI system is not too bad. However, some of the features that they do, uh, for instance, if you have a mage caster or something like that, a lot of their spells are going to get in the way, and you can't visually see what is going on whatsoever. Um, however, the spells are visually appealing when they are casted and stuff like that. They, they are very vi uh, visually appealing. They do lots of damage like they're supposed to do. And uh, they actually help out a lot within combat. So having a mage on your team uh, actually is a great benefit for you. In fact, I run three mages. That's what I do. Um, I run three mages, and that's how I, I completely decimate my enemies. Because not only are they using the elemental factors and stuff like that, but they also have boons to where it buffs my weapon damage and also adds element damage to my weapon as well. So you, uh, you'll see in the video of... The combat system of me doing it and you'll see a lot of me um, just sitting there decimating my enemies left and right um, however uh, r really the only thing that's really setting the combat system back is I would have to say is just the ragdoll feature the fact that you get hit one time and they can kick the stuffings out of you until you're dead uh, is ridiculous like one time I had a dog he uh, grabbed me, carried me off. My teammates couldn't get to me whatsoever. I'm tapping all the buttons and stuff like that. I'm trying to do whatever I can to get this dog off of me. Nothing. And he kills me. Because he just drags me off, starts biting me. There's nothing I can do. I can't fight back. I can't do anything like that. And he kills me. And it's so frustrating. Especially with one of the harpies come down. They swoop you. And they carry you off. And toss you off over a mountain. You can't fight back. You can't do anything like that. 
and you just lose a, a, a bunch of progression if you don't save. So you basically really want to save a bunch of times in this game. Other than that, the combat system is actually pretty... Um, it's pretty uh, satisfying, uh, especially with the class I'm using right now. I find that to be the most satisfying combat class within the uh, within the game. Um, but other than that, it's, it's really good. Story-wise, uh, the game does have an interesting storyline to it. Uh, however, I just wish it was a little bit more in-depth. It's not really what you call like a, a mem uh, mesmerizing or very, mem uh, you know, it, it's not really going to stick there in your head. Does that make sense? It's not really just going to stick there and, and stand out like, oh my god, this is a great storyline. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to be like Game of Thrones or anything like that. It's actually pretty generic if you want to ask me uh, personally. I think they could have done a lot better with the storyline. But um, that's just personally, again, that's personally my opinion. Um, some of the side quests, the side quests are very forgettable. Uh, there's not really anything uh, significant with the side quests, and they kind of just randomly come up on you. It's not like it comes up as an explanation mark or as like a marker on the map or something like that. But, hey, you can go talk to this guy and pick up a side quest. No, it doesn't happen like that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, it kind of just happens upon you. In fact, I've, I've caught a, a few side quests that I didn't even know I picked up. I didn't know I picked up the, uh, the side quest. In fact, I had to find out just by going to my qu my quest and be like, "Huh, where did this come from? I don't remember ever picking this up." So that's one of the the annoying features. Also, uh, some of the annoying features within the game is that you are going to get lost on what to do for some of the missions because it gives you like a brief thing, but it doesn't tell you exactly where you need to go or even give you a slight hint on what to do. Like, hey. There may be a hidden passage or, you know, give you any kind of hint. No, it just kind of throws you up in there, which I understand why, you know, it adds to the immersion and stuff like that. of You having to sit there and figure it out and find out and stuff like that, which I understand. But, however, um, however, that becomes very redundant. In or, like, in order for me to even progress through some of the quests, I actually had to Google it because it was not popping up on the map. It didn't show me where to go. It didn't even, it, it, it vaguely, vaguely gave me of like an idea of what to do. And I was just so lost. I was, I was so, so lost. In fact, there was a, a quest of, uh, a side quest of me having to find a boy and all it talked about was glowing flowers. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, what does glowing flowers have to do with someone seeing this guy, this kid get taken or abducted? You know, it made no sense. It made no sense. Like, why are they talking about flowers when I'm supposed to be sitting there uh, questioning the, um, you know, the townspeople on, have you seen a boy been taken? You know, this, that. Where are you getting flowers from a boy being taken? I don't understand that. I don't know. So some of the side quests made no sense to me. And I'm like, it's very redundant. And this played no part. And I just don't really care. And I, found, I just found it very frustrating because I was sitting there running around in circles and I'm supposed to take a hint about this and this. Like, trust me, I'm not stupid by no means when it comes to playing video games. In fact, I love I love puzzle games and I love riddle games. Uh, like, there's a reason why I like Sea of Thieves, but that was just, that was, no. I had no clue where I was going. That didn't that didn't help me at all. Didn't, didn't help me at all. So, that's just um, some of the things... Uh, the graphics, uh, however, the graphics on the game are, they look very, uh, you know, they're very good. I love the graphics on the game. Uh, it's very nice, especially from a distance. However, the AI rendering, that's what I'm going to have to sit there and say. The rendering is one of the most annoying things. For instance, I've had enemy, uh, the enemy just randomly pop up in my face and they're attacking me. I've had the enemy, uh, where I'm in the middle of attacking an enemy and they just despawn. And act like as if they were never freaking there. And then also when I'm trying to sit there and find certain AIs to talk to, you don't see them. They just randomly boop, 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 boop. You'll just start seeing people, you know, appear in front of you out of nowhere. So really the um, rendering distance for AI uh, needs to be improved greatly. I'm talking like I have to be right up on an AI character for them to be rendered in. At that point in time which is really annoying and frustrating especially when you're doing a quest where that requires you to talk to townsfolks to uh, like gain intel or gain information on a certain mission and when the AI is not rendering in then that becomes very uh, redundant and I don't like it 
uh, fast traveling traversing in the game there's no mounts there's no horses there is fast traveling but it's very hard to set up you have to get like a rift stone and a portal crystal place the portal crystal where you want to fast travel to then use a rift stone and then that's how you basically fast travel microtransactions everybody's been playing complaining about the microtransactions within the game however that was mostly on steam i don't know about console but I, everything i've gotten so far in the game has been through the game itself i haven't done any microtransactions within the game and as you can see with me fighting the monsters and stuff like that i'm actually chewing through them like it ain't shit yeah excuse my language but i really am i'm chewing through it like it ain't nothing you know personally um and that's just the way i've got my character set up and the way my character my class is and stuff like that and my companions as well um I do like the uh, the companions and the way they talk uh, with each other and with you. For instance, you could just be walking down a path and they'll be sitting there talking about how their previous person that hired them only kept them for a day, or how their previous uh, person that hired them only had females, or how they only had males, or something along that line. So there is uh, your AI does talk to you as you progress and as you just sit there and explore. Uh, I like that there's a lot of hidden passages, a lot of hidden caves and stuff like that for you to explore, for you to go check out and stuff like that. I just wish there was more interaction within the game. Because uh, to me, I was really hoping for this to be like a Skyrim killer. If you want my pers personal opinion, I really wanted this to be like Skyrim. Like I put, uh, I know this is going to sound like a no life, but when Skyrim came out, I played that game for six months straight. Like, I didn't touch no other game. That's how enthralled I was with Skyrim. And that's what I was hoping with with this game. But unfortunately, I can actually put this game down. You know, I don't really get enthralled. The side quests are, they can be forgettable. And some of the some of the quests in the game don't even activate. For instance, there's uh, one quest where, uh, I guess, some guy that's stalking you or whatever is supposed to just show up. And it's supposed to start a whole dialogue. Never happened. Never happened never happened in fact 90% of the game I've had to Google because either the quest just wasn't working properly or it just did not want to you know really give me enough information to tell me where I need to go you know when I'm sitting there and I'm looking through like 50 other different ways of how to uh, you know go about it and I'm lost I don't really know what else to do at that point but other than that, the game, like the combat system in the game, I find it fun. Uh, there's just, like I said, pros and cons. Uh, exploration is really good within the game because the environment is very nice. However, I do feel like there needs there needs to be fast travel or at least a mount, like a horse for you to ride. Considering how big, uh, how big and vast this world is, you definitely need some way of uh, being able to travel a lot faster or something along that line. Because uh, personally, with me, it just you know, I had one quest where I had to start, you know, start off on one side of the map, and then I had to go all the way on the other side of the map, and then I had to come all the way back, and I didn't have any portal crystals or rift stones for me to set up a fast travel thing. So now I'm sitting here spending like two hours just sitting there having to travel from one end of the world, to, uh, one end of the map to the next, just to complete one quest. And I, I find that very redundant, and I find it very... Uh, annoying it's very frustrating because i just want to i was like i just want to get this over with and i want to continue on uh however um the game to be honest with you if i really want wanted to put this up uh put it up is the game is fun it is very fun there is just some very very redundant very uh poor uh, stuff that Capcom chose for instance the ragdoll mechanic. I understand the reason behind that But at the same time it is very frustrating. You need to lessen it a little bit more I don't want to get hit or stub my toe on a pebble and then get the craps uh, You know kicked out of me because I cannot move You know I can't get out of the combat I can't get this guy to stop hitting me or his group of friends to stop hitting me. you know um you know, two, there just needs to be mounts. Three, there needs to be a fast travel feature within the game. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. Um, yes, in Skyrim, I didn't use the, the fast travel feature that much, but that was also because uh, look at all the random stuff that happened within Skyrim. Like, you could just be walking on the road and somebody would come up and, you know, kind of like, or you'll come across, like, somebody being, you know, handcuffed or something like, like that. Like, the world, the world was very 
interactive versus this one it's just combat after combat after combat there's not really a really uh inter interaction uh i mean there there is to some points but it's it's very f few and few in between it's not as you know like it was for skyrim um however i do like the boss fights uh, for instance, being able to grab onto the back of like a dragon or a griffin that starts plunging your blade into the back of that that big huge beast is amazing. I love being able to grab onto the bot, like the the dragons and the beasts and stuff like that, and just being able to control that that mechanic myself. Um, I I love that feature. I don't know why. I just love being able to like jump off a cliff, grab onto the back of an ogre, and just start plunging my blade into it into his back until he dies or something along that line. It's a really cool feature and I like it. Um, and, and and the boss fights they're just they're just really good, especially with all these big creatures that's just kind of flying around the around the map. It, it makes for a wonderful environment. Um, other than that, Dragon's Dogma 2, uh, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Um, it is definitely fun. I would definitely recommend trying it. Uh, just don't don't come into it with like Oh, this is a great game because it's not. It's you know. But other than that, I would have to say I give Dragon's Dogma 2 like a seven seven out of ten. Thank you for watching, guys. Peace.